The University of York is fast becoming one of the best places in the world to do games research. We have large projects such as NEMOG, where we're looking at new ways to use games for science and society. For example, we're working with York Council on a mobile phone game that will empower the voters of York to understand the decisions made on their behalf. IGI is our Centre for Doctoral Training, which will train 56 PhD students over the next eight years or so. In one of the technologies that we developed there, Monte Carlo Tree Search, we're working with uh, a UK company, AI Factory, and the technology has now been downloaded millions of times, and it's pretty likely that it might be on your mobile phone. In my PhD, I'm looking at this algorithm called Monte Carlo Tree Search, which is an AI technique which has seen lots of use to card games and the game of Go in particular, but not so much for games used in the video games industry um, and AAA games in particular. So I'm trying to take the lessons that we learn from research and reinforcement learning and trying to apply that to Monte Carlo Tree Search and use it to make Monte Carlo Tree Search more applicable to the sort of games that you see in the industry at the moment. I'm investigating why people play what's called self-paced games. The reason that I'm doing this is I was playing a game called Civilization, where it's a self-paced game and you just make decisions. I was thinking, what is it in this game which compelled me to play it and what made it so attractive? I've got three demos. They were all developed as part of the Iggy course. The first one is a simple turn-based game where there are two variants. There's one variant where all the characters look like humans and one of them where all the characters just look like abstract shapes. We're trying to see if people think that the agents that look like humans are more intelligent than the ones that look like abstract shapes. The second demo that I'm showing is a top-down shooter that I made in a group of students for our Iggy Games programming course. And the third one is a demo of the ant colony optimization technique, again made in Unity by myself over the course of a week. I'm using several techniques. One technique I'm using is to make copies of successful self-paced games. So I've made a copy of this game called Two Dots, which I can use in my experiments. And then I've also changed it, so I've made all the dots the same colour and removed the score and tested how people get on with playing it. Another technique I'm using is pupil dilation. So I can measure the size of people's pupils using this apparatus um, while they're playing the game. And the size of people's pupils is related to how much they're thinking. So we can work out how much attention they're paying to the game and how much they're thinking about it while they're playing. Games are important to society. They're bigger than film and they're bigger than music. There are hundreds of millions of people worldwide playing and committed to playing games. We can harness the enthusiasm that these people have for games to achieve new things for science and society. My research and my reason for going into research in the games area is to try and make it so that academic research into AI is actually more applicable to the sort of games challenges that we have in industry. Not much research has been done in games, so there's kind of wide open spaces of games research that are open for exploitation. Our research will benefit the UK games industry and we're already working very closely with them and we'll harness the power of games as a tool to achieve impact on science and society.